Eric, our topic today is going to be World War III, 1998. But before we get into that, I wanted to ask you about two more things. The first of which is Ronda Rousey. You were talking a little earlier about the growth and the opportunity for AEW and how it might be affected by things like some of the violence that we saw in the Swerve Strickland match. We saw Ronda Rousey appear on Friday night. They had a live collision and then a live rampage. And then they did a ring of honor taping afterwards. And at that ring of honor taping, a little surprise appearance by Ronda Rousey. Ronda apparently had a great time. Tony Khan said at the presser that she had not signed a deal with AEW. But I got to think, hypothetically, if he really is trying to get a television deal for Ring of Honor, having a talent and a name to the mainstream like Ronda Rousey attached, probably a pretty good strategy. Let's say you. Eh, I, I, I think she's, I don't want to say overrated. But I think in terms of the professional wrestling industry, she's overrated. Obviously, very accomplished martial artist, mixed martial artist, very accomplished in judo, phenomenal athlete. But I never really, she never clicked for me in WWE, despite a push from the gods. She got an amazing push. But there was something lacking with her, and she never clicked with me. I don't think she really clicked with the audience. Not not long after she first arrived, I think this, the the shine kind of wore off the star pretty quickly, and I never got the feeling that she was really serious about the industry. Now, don't don't get me wrong. Not in terms of her her performances or what she put in. Not suggesting she didn't put in a full effort. But it takes more than that, and I never really felt like she embraced the business. I don't think she – look, after Holly Holm knocked her out, decidedly, she left there, kind of whined about it a little bit, not, 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 a, uh, not someone who handled the loss well in the media, and then she segued into WWE. And I don't know, man. I just don't think she's as big a name as people sometimes think she is. I don't think she'd matter to a buyer. I don't think that there's going to be a media buyer out there or a programming buyer out there or an executive that's going, oh, wait a minute, you got Ronda Rousey? I wasn't too sure about this deal, but now I really want to do it. I don't I don't see that. By the way, before we go into World War III, I do, before I forget, did, have you seen the Vlad documentary? I have, yes. Man, oh man, Mike Johnson from PW Insider was a guest on Strictly Business a week and a half ago. And you no, know, I thought he was there presumably to talk about the CW deal because he broke the news and, and very, very, very familiar with the the nuances of what was going on at CW in wrestling. And I thought we were going to talk about that. Mike talked for 30 minutes straight about Vlad in the documentary. And I thought, wow, I, I should probably watch this. And I watched it the other night. What a great documentary that was. And I want to I want to hug Vlad. I just fell in love with him. I think it, it was one of those things, and you know, we talked about what's bad for business when advertisers or potential studio network heads and things see things that are kind of like, Ugh. this is the opposite of that. The Vlad documentary, I think, did such a great job of showcasing just how and why the professional wrestling business has become as popular and part of American culture as it has, because there are other Vlads out there, maybe not as quite as much of a fan as Vlad, but it it's part of the audience's lives. And a lot of people come to get, look at ad free shows, man. You've done you, you and your team kind of have done such a great job of building up this community of people who love wrestling and, until you step into that world and you see the impact that it can have on people, it's hard to understand it if you're just not a fan. But I think Vlad, to me, brought home how significant this form of entertainment can be and how it can positively impact people. So congratulations to everybody involved in that project. And Mike Johnson, thank you for showing up on Strictly Business and motivating me to check it out. Your passion turned into my passion. And um, yeah. Just love that. If you haven't seen it, it's on Peacock. Vlad the super fan. Go check it out. It'll you you can thank me after you watch it if you haven't already. 
I totally agree. An excellent documentary. I think Jeff Jarrett helped a little bit. You could tell that the uh, mastermind behind that thing was John Carlo. Uh, just a really incredible job that they did on that. And and I'm with you. Highly recommend. Check it out on Peacock. And uh, shout out to Mike for being uh, the best friend a guy could have. I mean, such a good friend of a lad. I'm going to disagree with you on the Ronda Rousey thing. I think she is a name to the mainstream. I don't think that a buyer necessarily is going to be more familiar with, you know, wrestling talent. This is somebody who was, you know, on the cover of ESP in the magazine type thing. And I know it was a handful of years ago, but the point is, I think she does have some main event mass market appeal from non wrestling fans. And I also think she didn't necessarily get the best shake in WWE. And I know you were saying, oh, she got a push from a lifetime, blah, blah, blah. But in the wrong role, I think Ronda Rousey would have crushed as a heel. And I hope if she does more work with AEW and Ring of Honor, we see her as a heel. Um, I felt the I same agree. way. I, I agree with you on that, Conrad. That that was a creative choice. And she is a heel. I think it, by nature, she's more of a heel than a baby face. And, and that could have been the reason why it didn't resonate with the audience or me. She was miscast. So I, I hand you that one. Before we get going, uh, and we are going to be talking about World War III, that was the November pay-per-view for WCW, but we all know the November pay-per-view for WWE is, was, maybe forever will be, Survivor Series. We are right around the corner from Survivor Series. It's happening this weekend in Chicago. They're going to set all kinds of records. They've sold this thing out a few times. They keep you know, creating some more production kills and creating some new seats. It's going to be a white hot crowd and there's lots of speculation about, you know, is this guy coming in and is this guy returning? Lots of whispers about CM Punk in Chicago, lots of whispers about Randy Orton. But what we know for sure is this is going to be Cody Rhodes first ever war games match. Perhaps the match made most famous in the NWA and WCW and of course created by his father, one of the most beloved quote unquote gimmick matches of all time. And now Cody Rhodes finds himself in the middle of his first war games. I'm pretty excited about that. Just knowing the history of that match and and the relationship that, you know, the Rhodes have with it. Uh, What do you think? Cody Rhodes in war games? That just kind of fits, doesn't it? It's a story within a story. Yeah. Right. I mean, you've got the, the, the wrestling story, the in-ring story. As we're really heading into WrestleMania, it's not too early to say that. In another 60 days, we're going to be hearing about people being inducted into the 2024 Hall of Fame. It's not that far away, folks. So I think that, you know, you've got you've got Cody Rhodes' wrestling story, and then you've got life, the story of life. And the story of life is that Dusty Rhodes was the visionary behind War Games. And I think for Cody to have an opportunity to participate, not just participate, but participate as a featured talent. It's full circle shit, brother. And I love it. I love that kind of thing. And I'm like, I'm partial, obviously to Cody and the entire Rhodes family. Um, but even beyond that, this is like, this is cool shit. This is the kind of story that makes sports so interesting. Any sport. 